I'm Jay-Z. I'm Daniel. I'm Rody. And this is Just My DIY. You know, summer is coming, which means lots of fun in the sun, which we love. And sometimes a little pup needs a break from the sun, so we made him a pop-up tent. Complete with <laughs> doggy bed. Yep, so in this video we're going to show you how we made the dog bed, as well as the pop-up tent. We start with building the dog bed. And that means busting out the miter saw. We needed four sides mitered for the outside of the dog bed, two long rails, several slats for the middle, and then four legs made out of two by two. We used poplar for this entire project because we happen to have quite a bit left over from previous projects. And of course we take a moment to send off all of the frays and obscurities on the wood so we can proceed with smoothness. We box out the design using the slats to make the basic shape and we use this to set the tape in place so that we have an easy time of gluing and nailing it together. Yep. Then you just open one side and fire up the air compressor. It was a suck start. <laughs> what? Note to self, don't try to put glue on vertically from the bottle. Put it on your fingers first and then wipe it into place. Close it to your correct angle and tack it with your nail gun. Now that we figured it out, the next corners were fairly easy to do. Just wipe a little bit of glue on straight from your fingers. Close it on up and then... Nail it. Nailed it. Now the last two corners we're about to do, it's important to know you need to do both corners at the same time. You'll see that we are putting two of the short slats in. These aren't going to stay there. This is just helping to guide us with those long rails that we have on the side. The outside piece is to mark the height so we know at what height to use the nail gun. And we glue the long edge. Set it into place and... Nailed it! And of course, one good turn deserves another. We did the same thing on the other side. Glue it on up. And... Nail it. Nail it. A little kung fu action going on. <laughs> now it's leg assembly time. Yep, so we just set them in place, make sure we like how everything fits, and then add a little bit of glue on top and set them underneath. Once we got all four done, we... Nail it? Nailed it. Nail it. Nailed it. So it turned out I cut the slats for the inside a little too long, so Daniel kindly shaved them down. Now the method of applying these evenly spaced slats is called wing it. The out two are tacked down with nails, while the rest were just mostly evenly spaced and glued into place. Since these were going to be under the mattress, they didn't have to be perfect. And they were only going to support an eight pound dog. So once the glue is in place, we set up some boards so that we could put a well-trained kettlebell on place and clamp everything up and let the glue set. Yep. Before we took a break with this, I went ahead and added some wood filler over the nail holes because this was going to be stained in the end and wanted it to be nice and pretty. Intermission. I give it like an 8.2.
I'm not surprised the neighbors didn't complain about the noise on that one. <laughs> Little stingray surfing. Some tug of war with a ring shark. Now it's time for the tent. So we continue with our method of winging it as we went through a long deliberation to figure out the height and angles with which to create the feet of the tent with. The feet are cut at 15 degrees, that way they lay mostly flush when the tent is in place. Daniel's marking a nice little cross right where we want to make the first hole for the dowel and then boring it out. And we test the dowel, and when the dowel doesn't quite fit, once you bore and don't succeed, bore, bore again. So boring. So each of the pieces got two holes, one at the top and one near the bottoms. And then once everything was Pretty much figured out on that. I went ahead and cut the dowels to size. There were two dowels a little over 31 and a half inches and one dowel at about 28 and a half inches. Then I set up a stop block because we needed little half inch cuts of a little bit larger dowel to make some end caps. And of course, sanding. Not as fun as nailing. Make sure you sand inside the holes for the dowels, that way everything moves nice and smooth. And don't forget to sand your little end caps. Now it's time for staining, but not before we get those clamps off. And a little bit of sanding on the wood filler. Now, I'll go ahead and admit with the staining that this isn't the first time I stained this. The first stain I had picked turned out pretty orange and there's nothing more I despise than really orange stain. So I sanded everything back down to bare wood and got this nice pretty stain color. I stained the bottom of the dog bed first so that could dry. Went ahead and got the dowels and all of the tent poles. And then I went back and stained the top of the dog bed. This color turned out so much better. And then to seal it for outdoor use, we're using spar urethane. But since this had lots of overspray, we didn't leave the camera running. The end caps have been painted blue and we needed to bore a hole into the middle of them as to fit over the dowels we wished to cap. You'll see here in a minute, we're actually going to need to place plastic underneath it as the paint was still a bit tacky after a while, and this kept it from sticking to the paper and to the sawdust. But we used the Fortsner bit to go about halfway into these dowels, so about a quarter inch hole that we made. Now we assemble. We insert the rods through the holes in the appropriate order. We set up the legs so that the two outside legs were on the same side when it was opened. Yep, and that's the reason we have two long dowels and one short one. So one long dowel goes up top, the second long dowel goes to the outside legs, and then the short dowel connects the inside legs. As always, I must defend myself. <laughs> I think you're the provoker sometime. <laughs> and retaliate. <laughs> so we get all the dowels in place, and then it's time for the glue up. What glue super glue combo? Our fave. Caps first, a little bit of wood glue in them, super glue on the dowels, and then place those on to 
here. About 30 minutes later, we will move on to setting the outside legs in place, which will not be glued. And the inside legs on the top dowel will be, so everything is locked in place, yet mobile to create a tent or collapse as you see fit. Yep. So we're just putting a little bit of glue on the dowel, and you'll see that we'll move that inside rail close, but not touching the outside rail. Just enough of a gap there, and that way the insides stay put and the outsides move. So on the bottom of the legs, just put a little bit of glue in and secure those straight flush with the caps. And then it's time to sew. First I'm measuring from both bottom dowels over the top one to know what the total length is going to be. And I'm actually using an old shower curtain that I had designed to make the tent. So using my favorite rotary cutter on a mat to cut everything down and since this fabric frayed quite a bit I'm going to roll the hem twice to keep all the frays inside. Use a little bit of fabric tape to make this first roll and then I'll flip it over again and sew it all down where everything's tucked nicely inside the hem. I cut a piece of ribbon into six equally sized pieces and then use some fray check on the ends to make sure that those don't fray and unravel. Once I got both ends checked, I then went to measuring and marking for their placement. There will be three on each side, pinning those in place on both sides. And then sewed them right down. And after that was done, it's time to put it all together. Rody's very curious about what we're doing. I think he's really going to like this. What do you think, Daniel? We'll see you in a minute. Yep. Yep, I think so. <laughs> this dog is spoiled. We hope you like this video as much as Brody likes to be outside. And if you did, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And of course, we have a list of uh, materials down below. And if you're not watching this on our website, head over to JustMyDIY.com. See you next time.